have a good day. Sponsored by Sunday Science with LA Beast. Good day and happy Sunday to each and every single one of you. This is LA Beast with Sunday Science fe featuring the LA Beast. My phone is ringing. Ah, uh, it. Oh, hello. LA Beast here and happy Sunday to each and every single one of you out there and welcome to Sunday Science with LA Beast. In all that I plan on doing each Sunday I'm going to pick six ridiculous science experiments and try my best to perform them. Um, and, and you know what, uh, as I'm going to be doing this every single Sunday I've decided to go out to the uniform store and for forty dollars I have purchased myself uh, a triple XL science coat. So uh, right now uh, I'm going to put it on and hopefully it shall fit me. Ugh. Well, uh. well, it's a little bit snug, uh, and I already wrote LA Beast MD on here, so I don't think I can return it, but. Without further ado, this is Scientist L.A. Beast. Let's get started with our first experiment. And today's first science experiment is egg blowing. Place two porcelain egg cups on the table, uh, one in front of the other, with an egg in the front cup. I have an egg right here. Uh, blow hard from above on the edge of the filled cup. So I'm gonna be blowing into the cup there. Suddenly the egg rises, turns upside down and falls into the empty cup. Because the eggshell is rough, it does not like fly against the smooth wall of the egg cup. Air is blown through the gap into the space under the egg where it becomes compressed. When the pressure of the air cushion is great enough, it lifts the egg upwards. Uh, so hopefully, all I'm going to do here uh, is take this egg that I placed in this cup and I'm gonna blow it into this cup. Whoa. Holy scoot. Okay, whoa, I, 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 don't, I didn't even think that was gonna work. Whoa! Isn't, that, this is excellent. Okay, I, you know what, I cracked the egg. We got one final egg, we're gonna get this. Nope. Whoa, science is excellent. Yeah. This next experiment is called the hovercraft, and apparently we are going to be experiencing a phenomenon. Uh, and I'm going to place this tin lid, uh, and this is like a heater, like a, when you go camping. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna light this, place the tin lid on there, uh, on a hot plate and heat it well. If you then let a few drops of water fall on the lid, you will observe a small natural phenomenon. The drops of water are suspended in the air like hovercraft, and whiz hissing to and fro for a while. Now, on contact with the heated metal, the water drops begin to evaporate that once on the underside. Since the steam escapes with great pressure, it lifts the drops into the air. So much heat is removed from the drops by the formation of steam that they do not even boil. I don't even know what that means. Okay. All right. Uh, it's, it's burning. You can see the, there's a flame right there. I'm going to put this tin lid and we'll uh, we'll give it a, we'll give it a minute or two just to heat up, and then we will witness this phenomenon. I didn't want to smother the flame there, but just have a little bit of water on a spoon. Let's check this out. That didn't work. All right, uh, we, we are going to Plan B. Uh, we are just using a conventional stove. Uh, I I put the tin lid on there. Uh, we'll just we'll let it heat up here for a minute. I got a little bit of water. Whoa. W would you look at that, folks? It's, it's a phenomenon. Okay, you know what? It's not, okay. No, okay, we have cut. Take three. Whoa. Would you look at that? Look at that. We, uh, I'm witnessing some uh, UFH2Os. Unidentified flying water. 
That's, that's crazy. Whoa. Look at that. Look at that guy. It's hovering. Would you look at that, folks? Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Science is cool. What do I do? And on we move to the speedboat. Uh, and all I did, uh, very carefully using an X-Acto knife, now I split the tail end of a match. I have three matches here. Uh, and then I smeared some soft soap in between where I split the matches. Now if you place the match in a dish of tap water, it moves forward qu quickly for quite a time. Several matches could have a, a race in the bathtub. The soap destroys the surface tension of the water by degrees as, it's gradu as it gradually dissolves. This causes a backward movement of the water particles, which produces a reaction, a uh, forward movement of the match. With a drop of detergent instead of soap, the movement would be like a rocket. Well, you know what, since I didn't read the end part with detergent, Let's just start off with the, the dish soap. So I have some tap water. We're going to fill this plate uh, with the tap water. Wow. Well, gosh darn, would you look at that? It's not working. Uh, this time around, I've made that opening a little bit more pronounced. Um, I went down in the basement, I have some laundry detergent, and I'm just gonna... There we go. I'm going to douse these matches in laundry detergent where it says it would be like a rocket. This is, this is the speedboat. This is the speedboat using a match. Let's just get focused here. You motorboat and son of a gun! Science is awesome. Okay, and... So in conclusion, next experiment. Now would you believe me if I could take a regular clothespin and this belt, and using one finger, balance this belt on one of these pieces of the clothespin, Probably not, you probably wouldn't believe me. But you know what, uh, experiment number 129, the floating beam, it would not seem possible to balance a closed peg with one end on the tip of your finger if a leather belt is hung over half the peg. But the force of gravity can apparently be overcome. And we're gonna overcome gravity here. have a clothespin, a belt, and it's balancing on my finger. Would you look at that? All right, and pretty much, pretty much as I'm sweating profusely here, what I did uh, to defy gravity, well, we'll read it right here in the book. And we can transition here. The whole secret of this trick is to, to cut a small little hole uh, at the top of the paper clip there, uh, slant wise, uh, and then the belt, which you squeeze firmly into that little hole that you made, it leans so far sideways because of its slanting fixing that the center of gravity of wood and the belt together is shifted under the tip of the finger and the balance is obtained. Uh, and, and like you see, uh, what I had to do, I had to like, just c cutting that little little slant right there took me the last 45 minutes. So nonetheless, uh, we got our thumbnail photo uh, and I lost a couple pounds uh, while doing this. So, you know what, science can help you lose weight uh, and that has not been approved uh, by science. For the second to last experiment, uh, this is called inertia the stable pencil, uh, because you know what, I didn't have a stable pencil that would stand up by itself, 
I'm using a stable blue marker. And all I'm going to do is hold a strip of paper over a smooth table edge and place a pencil on it. Can you remove the paper without touching the pencil or knocking it over? The pencil will certainly fall if you pull the paper away slowly. The experiment works if you take the paper away in an instant by hitting it with your fingers. The pencil resists the movement so that it and does not tip over. All right, so uh, again, like, let's say, let's say I take this marker, uh, and then I, I try and, and take the paper here and I pull it away. Uh, and, and you can see that the marker fell down. Uh, and now, uh, when I use inertia, uh, I'm going to make it so where it doesn't even happen. So I'm going to make it where it doesn't fall over. fall over. No, maybe, maybe it's the paper. You know, maybe, maybe it's the color blue. Maybe we need a different color here. Inertia, ladies and gentlemen. Science rules. Woo! Peace out. Inertia. All right. Next, the final experiment. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. For the last final experiment here for Sunday Science with the LA Beast, uh, I have two boxes, one of which, uh, you know, this is just a normal empty box. Uh, and what I'm going to do is demonstrate something that has to do with gravity. So uh, if I put this box, boom, like right, right in the middle there, uh, the center of gravity is in the middle of the box. And as I move it slightly towards the edge, you can see it all about to, up there, it toppled off the table. Uh, and then what I did, I actually created a special um, bewitched box. This box has magic powers. Uh, and you know what, as I put it up there, it's, it's balancing nicely. Uh, but Alakazam, science is awesome. Have a good day. Somehow, some way, uh, the box is magically de defying all odds of gravity. Why? Because what I did, uh, I actually, I created a double bottom. Uh, stick a false bottom in a thin cardboard box and hide a lead weight. I actually used a small copper weight that I had and hide that in the space below. You can always balance the box on the corner uh, in which the piece of the lead is lying. So there's a heavy piece of lead right there. Uh, keep going. Uh, the, oh, the, ooh, Alakazam, who, you know, this could be the thumbnail. Magic powers, magic powers. There's magic powers going on. Whoa. I am the LA Beast. Science rules and so do you. And so does O'Doyle. And science is also frustrating. This is the LA Beast. Have a good day. Oh, this, this lab coat is pretty heavy. Man. Have a good day.